guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. So today I have a really good video for you guys. I have Yui back on again. The Arrow was his former sponsored account. Now it's Joe Mike. We're going to be talking about how he finished in the global top 20 on his sponsored account last season with this deck. Really cool three musketeer battle ram variation of a split musketeer deck. This one is really fun to play. So in today's video, we're going to go over the deck, over a few replays against some of the best clashers in the world, and then we're going to hop into a couple live matches after that by yours truly, so anything could happen there. So guys, how you doing on this Monday before we get to the actual good stuff, the strategy advice straight from Yui? I know a few of you guys have commented before in previous Pro Tips episodes that you'd like to see the write-up that these pros provide to me, so this time, just trying something different, I'm going to include the original text that Yui sent to me and you can see how I kind of uh, deciphered it and put it into my own words to share for you guys so you can kind of get an inside view of what the process that I go through on every video actually looks like. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop into replays. You can see right now I'm kind of reviewing uh, his profile. Definitely a beast player in the top 10 at the time of this recording right now. We're going to go ahead and watch these replays and we'll get into the deck advice. But first off, how are you guys doing? I hope you're happy even though it happens to be a Monday, at least when I'm releasing this video, some of you probably watching on Tuesday or later on in the week, maybe even a year from now, if this video goes viral, who knows? I'm actually doing really, really well because I just saved a life. I know, I know, it's non-Clash Royale related, but I, I just gotta share with you guys. I've talked about this in my Beyond the Mic episode uh, from a few months ago, but I, I think it's amazing that we all have the power to save one person's life out there for $2.50. Is that crazy? I mean, if I, ah, geez, I don't want to get on a huge rant here, guys, but you know, donate to againstmalaria.com. $3 can buy a bed net to save somebody from possibly getting malaria, which is the most easily preventable uh, cause of death in the entire world, uh, aside from hunger, which is a little bit of a different issue. But for a bed net, you can save somebody's life. That's crazy to me. I'll include a link if you want to save somebody's life. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. Again, $2.50, over 500,000, half a million people, including women, children, men, everybody die every year from malaria. Is this easiest way to prevent deaths. Anyway, guys, sorry for the public service announcement, but hey, I'm pretty feeling pretty happy and proud of myself uh, today. So let's actually get to the actual episode, the actual meat and potatoes of today's content, which is the musky battle ram deck. And check out Joe Mike taking down Toby Spirit Hawk, my boy. He is the best, in my opinion, German streamer out there, at least for my uh, flavor of content. You should check him out for sure. I really want to have him on the channel soon. But a nice three round victory there by Joe Mike, by Yui against Toby, and you can see just how powerful this deck can be. So let's get into the episode here, and now what I want to do is something a little bit different. I want to walk you guys through a possible starting hand, and then your starting play based on that hand, and then basically we'll play a sample match in our heads to give you guys a good idea of where your head should be at when playing this deck. So starting off in the match, just like a traditional Three Musketeers split deck, it's all about the pump. It's all about that pump. So what you want to do is place the Elixir Pump in front of your King Tower, especially because rockets are so prevalent in the meta right now, so you don't want to place it in behind your building unless you're very sure they're not playing rocket. Uh, so you don't want to take that, uh, that incidental damage of the rocket by any stretch. So you're going to start your uh, Elixir Pump in front of your King Tower, or, if you don't have Elixir Pump in your starting hand, you're going to want to split your Goblin Gang or uh, play your Fire Spirits at the, uh, the river and then cycle over to the Elixir Pump as quickly as possible and get that Elixir Pump on the board. Now, it's not just to gain an Elixir advantage. It's also probably going to bait out your opponent's first direct damage spell. If not, it's going to be bait out their Miner. So, if they have a direct damage spell, if they have a fireball, if they have a rocket, if they have a poison, they're most likely going to use it against your elixir pump. And that's going to be very valuable information for you guys later on. Because once you figure out what spell they have, and if they don't have fireball, poison, or rocket, or lightning in their deck, then you're going to you're gonna have an easy win. Let's just put it that way. Because if they don't have that direct damage, it's going to be very tough to stop the three musketeers. Now, 
Okay, so you put your pump, finally you cycle to your pump. Now, one note that Yui told me is that you have to be very conservative with your Goblin Gang and your Fire Spirit. Splitting them is actually a really good idea, Goblin Gang, that is, because you need that defense in this deck. This deck doesn't have a ton of defensive weapons. It has three tanks, it has Knight, it has Battle Ram, and it has Miner. It has uh, Fire Spirits in Goblin Gang. You have to rely heavily on them with the three Musketeers on defense. So anyway, back to our pretend scenario here. You're starting off the match. You have your Elixir Pump in front of your King Tower. You've cycled to it or you had it in your starting hand. What then? Well, you wait to see what your opponent does. Most likely, they're going to get to their Fireball, Poison, or whatever, and use it against your Elixir Pump. Now, that should be the first time you play your three Musketeers in the game after they use their direct damage against your elixir pump. Now this is going to be your first three musketeer push and it's generally going to be in the first two minutes of the match. So what you want to do then is play your three musketeers and you want to put two musketeers uh, split towards the direction where your tower has the lower HP, not the most. The lower. The reason being is because they just use their direct damage spell, so they're not going to be able to get it off against that tower. So you can put it towards the lower side. Now when you get into overtime, it's going to be opposite. You're not going to be playing your pump to draw out their spell, so you're going to split your three musketeers so that two go to the tower with the higher, split towards your tower with the higher HP. So very basic rules to understand there. Uh, so again, uh, side note, you might not have caught that. In double elixir time, Yui doesn't even use the pump. So you shouldn't be pumping in double elixir time with this deck, according to Yui. And I'm going to trust his judgment there, finishing top 20 with the deck that is. So after that, so then what do you do? You split your three musketeers. You have them going uh, two in one lane, two in the other. They didn't draw, they didn't use their spell because they already used it. Most they can do is maybe arrows or zap. Rarely do people run like fireball and lightning in their deck. You know, it happens, but very rare. So after that, you have three Musketeers now split. What are you going to do? Well, you have three different options according to Yui. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw them all out for you. Outline them all right now. Number one is you do a big push on the side of the one Musketeer. Now this is the most common option for Yui. So he'll drop a Knight and a Battle Ram with that one Musketeer and force the defender to defend to pick a side, right? Now, the other more high-risk, high-reward situation, if your gut tells you that your opponent doesn't have a good counter, you can go really crazy on the two Musketeer side. So you can drop that same Battle Ram and that same Knight or Miner on the two Musketeer side and just hope they don't have another option, another answer for that combo. You also have Log to use if they drop like a Skarmy on it, okay? Now, the third option is just put one tank on each side. It's a safer scenario and make the defender decide. That's usually what's going to result in some chip damage on both tower or maybe even some more substantial damage on both towers. And your opponent has to be on their toes and ready to defend if you do that. So then what? Then, then what do you do? Let's say you drop a tank in both lane. Then what do you do? Do you just leave it there and wait? Or do you keep unloading? Well, it depends on what your opponent does. You want to really keep track of what spells they have beyond their fireball or their poison or their lightning or their rocket. If they have zap and log, if they've already used it, if it's out of rotation, then it's really safe to drop down your Goblin Gang and your Fire Spirits and really punish them. Goblin Gang, according to Yui, one of the best cards in the game, especially if you can catch your opponent without their Log in their hand. Goblin Gang, without having to deal with Log at all, is such a strong card. For three Elixir, you're getting six Goblins. That's that's a lot of value there. Okay, so after that, you're dropping your... your uh, if they do, excuse me, if they drop a Skarmy or a Goblin Gang's or a Spirit, Skelly on the first three musketeer push, then you can start putting down that predictive log. So basically, that's the deal. Uh, and it's essentially, the Battle Ram is essentially a tank in this deck. It deals a lot of damage. It can be used to soak up damage defensively. It can be used to bait out the log, which is very valuable, as we just discussed. If you bait out the log with the Battle Ram, the log really good against the Battle Ram, you'll, you'll be able to play the, that Goblin Gang, that Fire Spirit, really quickly against your opponent, and that's going to be very difficult to answer if you bait out their log with your Battle Ram. Another reason that the Battle Ram is in this deck so difficult Defensively, it deals a lot of damage offensively, it acts as a pseudo tank offensively, and of course it can bait out the log. If they pump, you want to make sure you use your miner and a log if they're pumping in the middle of the map and for their king tower, because that's gonna that predictive log is probably gonna take out the, the skeletons or the goblin gang that they defend against your miner with.
And then guys, from there on out, it's gonna get to double elixir time, and that's where this deck really shines. You can go ahead and just keep splitting your three musketeers. I'm all sure I'm sure you've all gone against three musketeer decks where you're just like, dude. This guy's relentless. They don't stop at the Three Musketeers. And that's what you're going to be when you play this deck in Double Elixir time. You won't, again, be pumping up at all. You want to switch it up. Now your One Musketeer, again, is going to be on your... That's right. The One Musketeer is going to be on your lower HP tower. Your Two Musketeers are going to be split towards your higher HP tower. Then they're going to go ahead and do uh, their direct damage against your two musketeers. And then you're going to combo the one musketeer with that battle ram or the miner if they have a bowler. The miner's a great distracting tank. That's why you want to decide which tank you want to use based on how they defend. So you can distract a bowler, face it in the opposite direction. And then what you can do is they'll probably use a log. If they use a log, you guys know what to do. You unload your goblin gang or your fire spirits because you baited out their log. So guys, that is the deck in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and move on to some live matches. Be right back. All right, guys, here we are. I am ready to get into a live match for you guys, hopefully taking all the tips that we've already discussed and kind of implementing them into my gameplay. Let's go ahead and see how we do. You can see I have the deck all pulled up right here. Battle Ram, Miner, and uh, Knight are my tanks. I have three Musketeers and, of course, the rest of the cards. Well, we just discussed everything. We don't need to go over it again, Ash. Let's just hop into a match here. And, hey, let's see how we do. Love this deck, guys. Excited to uh, play a live one here. So let's wish him GG and see how we're doing. So... <clears throat> Kind of a weird starting hand. Nothing too interesting. Unless he drops a pump, then we'll play our miner. But for now, we're just going to go, oh my god, what an aggressive play by him. So this is definitely not going to be what you normally want to do here. But we're going to go super aggressive in the right lane. That battle ram will make contact. That's pretty solid there. So uh, we're going to take over half the HP off that left, uh, the, excuse me, that right tower. And we're going to have to rely on the three musketeers here on defense. Now, he hasn't used a spell. He's going to get a lot of damage off my towers here. He's playing really aggressively, though. We're going to go ahead and log over here on the left. Try to mitigate any more possible damage done on that left tower. But you know what? Even though he has both of my towers really, really down, I do have... <clears throat> Excuse me, the three musketeers still alive. We're gonna go ahead and put a tank on the right side here Try to take down that right tower and see what we can do on the left side In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and send in a miner there be pretty aggressive because I know he's rather low on uh, On elixir at this point and you can see there uh, the miner doing some ship damage I'm gonna go ahead and defend here with the goblin gang on that electro whiz man He came out the gate really really aggressive and we're gonna try to make him pay for it here You can see I quickly take the lead even though things didn't start off necessarily that great for yours truly so here interesting part uh, point in the game at this point I'm, I'm gonna actually just play some defense instead of uh, pumping up I don't really want to pump up unless you know I figure he's gonna go for an, for a golem push and all right, I'm gonna do it I haven't seen a spell out of him yet other than zap I'm just gonna be super aggressive with these three muskies hopefully take down that left tower uh, oh I forgot about the uh, he also had uh, the tornado there so he plays a uh, an elite barbs. I'm going to go ahead and defend with a knight here. Ooh, bad knight there. A little bit late. He's going to take my left tower. That was unfortunate. Uh, happens, though. Happens. There's a live match, folks. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to let him actually go ahead over there on the... Uh, and I'm going to cycle to my, uh, my goblin gang. <clears throat> Try to defend this right tower here. And I do defend there. What I'm going to actually do here is let him take my right tower. And I'm just going to go with a battle ram here at the, at his tower. And then I'll play three musketeers. So hopefully he'll defend the battle ram, which he does. And then I'm just going to try to sneak in the three musketeers there. And hopefully I'll pull off a three crown here. It looks like it's definitely going to be a three crown. Now he played super aggressive here. And it wasn't super pretty, to be honest with you guys. But hey, it looks like I'm going to get the job done. I'm just going to go ahead and minor log here. And that will be GG. So, wow. That guy was like, woof came in hot all right well played let's do one more match because that went really fast actually <laughs> let's hop into one more here and see if we can actually get our pump down that, that guy didn't give me a chance to do anything the golem beat down with elite barbarians ouch okay so this time we're gonna just gonna go again good luck and again, kind of a weird starting hand here. We don't have our pump, and it is not our fifth card up. In fact, it's not our sixth card up. Remember, what you want to try to be doing here, what Yui said was, you cycle and you play defense, right? So we're just going to send the knight in back and drop him off back of the king tower. Uh, 
All right, so this is gonna be interesting here. I'm gonna go ahead and play a defensive battle ram. Oh my god, this guy's nuts. I'm just gonna keep playing defense here. Uh, but you can see the power of the uh, the fire spirits again here. Uh, it gets no damage off my tower. In fact, I get a little bit of damage off his tower. And again, another ag aggressive opponent here. I'm gonna play Goblin Gang defensively. Finally, I'm actually cycled to my elixir pump, so I like the position that I'm in right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drop off this elixir pump in a second here, even though he's gearing up for a big push, I should have time to defend against this. So I'm going to play the Elixir Pump in the back. The reason I'm playing it in the back instead of up front is because I don't think he has a rocket in this deck. I'm going to go ahead and play again a defensive battle ram here. The reason I'm doing that is to distract that Valkyrie for a bit so I can take out, take down, excuse me, that Electro Wiz. And then I'll be able to take down the, Val the Valkyrie, excuse me, with the Knight and the Barbarian. So he does fireball my, uh, so he has a direct damage spell. We're going to let some damage take over here, and what we're going to do is drop off our three musketeers because he just used the fireball. So now we're going to send in the musketeer on the left side. Remember, we want to go ahead, and he's probably going to defend the right, so we're going to go after the left instead. Now, I haven't seen a log in this deck, so I'm going to go ahead and play some uh, fire spirits to protect that musketeer in case they drop any sort, of, uh, any sort of direct damage. And he doesn't, so we actually, or he did with a zap actually, but uh, it was pretty well. Uh, well uh, played on our part. So what we're gonna do now is only one minute left We're not gonna go ahead and drop that pump instead We're just gonna split these this goblin gang in the back here again trying to cycle to my three musketeers I'm gonna play the knight back here. So he has electro whiz. He has fireball We know he's gonna have that fireball ready for us. We're gonna play a uh, we could have played that in the right lane But instead I want to make him allocate some elixir to defend in that right lane there Hopefully he doesn't have enough elixir to fireball just right off the bat here in case and in fact I don't think he did. So he is going to get a little bit, a couple hits here with that, uh, or one hit rather, <clears throat> with the uh, the Electro Wiz. And we're going to go ahead and just keep the pressure ramped up here with only 23 seconds left on the right side. Take down that E Wiz, or very close to. And again, a little bit of leakage there, unfortunately. We're going to go ahead and log over here. Nothing else to worry about in terms of. Uh, we're going to split. The, uh, the three musketeers here. I could have gone more aggressive and just sent in the miner. I am going to send in a battle ram over here. He used the fireball in the left lane, and this is going to be good here, guys. This is going to be really good. We're going to take down those elite barbs, and then we're going to send in the uh, the miner. And this probably might be okay. Good e whiz there. Might be GG, I was going to say, but a good e whiz and zap, and we take it down to 284. Now remember. We don't have a lot of direct damage options in this deck. A little bit late there with that log. Is it going to reach? I didn't even notice. It is going to reach. We're going to play, again, a Battle Ram over here. And then we're going to send in the Miner, and that should be GG. Miner, log. And that is it, guys. So that, one, that match actually went really, really well. Uh, I guess that's going to do it for the video. Just wanted to thank you all so much for continuing to watch me and support the channel. Really, really appreciate it. I've been reading your comments more than ever lately. I've been trying to spend the last hour or, or excuse me, the first hour or so after my videos go live to kind of interact with you guys. It's a great way to get a hold of me if you have any ideas, any, uh, you know, feedback for the channel, negative or positive. Just be constructive if, if you if you could. So, guys, thanks so much. Again, huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. You can find his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.